Howdy, I'm Ben Solak. NFL Draft is next week. Welcome to the play sheet. With the opening script in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Caleb Williams. <laughs> They're going to take him one overall. There's never really been like a discussion about who's going first off the board in this year's NFL Draft. The presumed first overall pick since really like the end of last season has been Caleb Williams, quarterback out of USC. And while there were like brief flashes of interest in other quarterbacks this cycle. And there was a, a moment where maybe the Bears were gonna keep Justin Fields and trade the pick. It has been pretty much set in stone for like over a year now that Caleb Williams is going first overall. Now, while we may emphatically know that he's going there, it's easy to forget why. There's so much conversation about Jaden Daniels and JJ McCarthy and Drake May, the, the quarterbacks who are debated for QB2 and QB3 and QB4 and hey, we did videos on all those guys. You should go watch them. And we did them first because the, the, those are the debatable players. Because Caleb's fate is sealed, we know his destiny. His highlights are posted a lot less. His lowlights are posted a lot less. There's just less analysis because we don't really need it. But we do. We do need it. We, we got to remember why this guy is going first overall. We got to understand what exactly the Bears are, are, are buying with that first overall pick. And we got to know why is Caleb so certainly, so so definitely the top quarterback in this class, which has some really talented guys. And for that, we go to play action. The first thing to understand about Caleb is that he has throws in his bag that like people shouldn't have. Like this is, a, it's like a weapon is too strong for one man to possess. Like this is just stupid stuff that he's able to do. Third and four against Utah. Now, I will say for Caleb, nothing Caleb loves more than taking a third and four and being like, what if our priority here was gaining 40 yards, which isn't great, but it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be just a little sit down right, right here and then they're going to wrap this behind two man side. That's what he's initially working. You get this outbreaker here, you get a pipe runner and then you get like kind of just like a dummy vertical, whatever. This two receiver side is what Caleb wants to work on third and four. Snap the football. All right, we land on our back foot. You could probably throw this like on his numbers right now, you're two yards off the line again. He's coming to tackle him. You're probably going to get like one yard short and then you go for it on fourth down. Like maybe whatever. Caleb's already off it. All right. Now, ideally, you want the gravity of this player to open up this wrap route, but that safety is low on it, eyes on it, right? This is now not opening up for you, okay? This three receiver side, if you wanted to throw this, you had to be early to it. He's not there. This pole runner's running right into this middle of the field safety. This route's kind of dead no matter what. So we are not in a good spot offensively for USC. And oh, pressure off the left side, right? Left tackle loss. And so Caleb's got to back up. He's trying to find a scramble drill creation. Like, all right, somebody move around for me. They're already kind of in, in off script mode. And eventually he's going to break out to his left. Now, with pressure bearing down, you can see him. See him. He's starting to uncork this throw. He's throwing this receiver here. No, 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 no. He's throwing this comeback into the sideline, right? Which is the higher difficulty throw. I don't think he ever saw this thing coming back, but he sees this receiver with a step working into the sideline and he's going to try to tattoo it on him before he goes out of bounds. All right. And obviously he successfully does it. It's a first down and it, it okay, great play from the end zone view. You're going to see why I care about this so much. All right. So, okay. We're reading that the front side. That's not there. Left tackles losing. I got to try to create some space. Okay. I'm scrambling to my left. The, the special thing about Caleb are, are his throwing platforms. It's the way that he will be like, facing the target he'll be like hips towards the target he'll be hips towards the target moving away or like left perpendicular to the target that's what he's doing right now it, he will be a pressure in his face front foot down back foot down like he is he gets into the weirdest throwing platforms you've ever seen dude like i'm going to compare him to somebody later that you're not allowed to compare people to but he, he gets to these throwing platforms where you shouldn't be able to generate accuracy let alone velocity and then he does Watch the way that when, when Caleb fires off his right foot here, watch how it, it it explodes him off the ground. All right, where he's he's getting loaded to throw this route right here. Boing! Do you see do you see him jump off his right foot? That's this is unbelievable. Look how much air he gets just off of one foot while, while trying to get enough torque on this to throw it with velocity to beat be the receiver to the sideline. You 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 have not seen. A quarterback move like that. Like, that's just, that's such stupid explosiveness. I, I, coiling that hip and then uncoiling it. That's dumb. And you're like, oh, Ben, like, foot, like, this is not quarterbacking, right? Like, oh, you know, our, our arm talent and accuracy and processing, whatever. No, like, Caleb's entire game is defined by the fact that he can do this with his body. 
and it, it opens up the field for him in magical ways. Here, this time against UCLA, in structure, right? Because what's incredible is that while Caleb's on the move, and while he's, he's solving pressure problems and creating space in the pocket, he will still be in the structure of the play, all right? They are going to send pressure, drop this backer off, and that backer right there kind of initially walls this crossing route. He, get, he gets in the way of it. The crossing route tries to climb up. I don't really understand what this route is supposed to be, to be honest. This safety steps down and, and takes it, right? They they really clog up this middle of the field because I think they, they want, they think Caleb wants to get this ball hot to the middle of the field behind the blitz. So they really clog this up. What you end up getting now is you end up getting this vertical route here on the outside with no safety help. This safety steps down. This player ends up gaining depth, but he's, he's not at a, at a point where he, he can influence the play. And so if you were in structure on this play, right? Snap the football. All right, land on our drop back and the pocket were perfectly clean. You're seeing this. This is mucked up right here. This player is not gonna be able to get back to this vertical route. You are gonna in structure, set your throwing platform this way, hitch, and then deliver this thing, right? Oh, to the sideline, let's try to win a one on one nine ball. That's a perfectly reasonable decision to make. That's in structure, that's, that's good processing. For Caleb, it's pressure now coming on the blitz. And Caleb, Caleb sees this route and he knows what he wants, right? You are gonna get past these two safeties no matter what. So Caleb climbs up into the pocket and throws this thing. Like, there's, there is room to hitch this. Okay, reset, and now hitch and set your, your platform hitch and you can you, a very standard throwing motion. Caleb just, while he's on the move, just as as he's he's moseying up and climbing the pocket, just releases this thing and it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And some of you. Again, I, I cannot stress enough how in structure this aggression is, is, is acceptable and understandable. The gumption is in, is in doing that with, with your throwing platform. It's just walking up into the space, good pocket management, and just being able to still throw this that accurately that far down the field without bothering to set your feet. Stupid and I hate it. The important thing to understand is that like, while sometimes the pocket silliness looks like laziness, right? It's just like, oh, he's not getting set and he's falling away from throws and there's no mechanics. It is oftentimes the result of really fast processing. And, and it's Caleb realizing, oh, if I just do this right now and I don't waste my time setting my platform, I can I can get this play done more successfully. Really cool example against Oregon. Oregon's kind of in, in a, uh, a little bit of a fire drill, right? They just got players off. And so the picture is not super clean as to what's happening defensively. Hard to get a pre-snap read. As we run this right before the ball snapped, we'll see, okay, that safety is stepping down here. And this safety is gonna probably move single high. That's what, should we, what we should expect. Against that, we really like having this deep crosser right here, right? And then they go vertical and then they run this shallow behind it. If you were in in in, in halves, right? If you if you had a deep half safety, this crosser is probably working right into somebody's lap. But because we're gonna rotate that safety middle of the field, we now probably like this, this crossing pattern. So when we run this, that's what that's what we see from Caleb, right? Okay, drop back. That safety's bailing middle of the field. Check the leverage on that crosser. Holy smokes, look, like we have great leverage here working into, into a huge void. Let's throw this thing. Now he's not even ready to throw it. He hasn't finished his drop yet, right? And he's also about to get pressure up the pipe, right? Left side of the line lost again. And so just in his drop back, he's realizing, oh, we've got we got a big opportunity here. And he he gets he gets the fifth step down on the drop back and then just falling backwards rapidly. Like look how fast the throwing motion is to get rid of this ball, right? Just okay, drop that left foot, all arm this sucker, and still freaking lead the receiver upfield. Right, the route's going here. He, he bends him up this way, get it to him with space in front of the sideline before the corner can recover. Hit him in stride so he maintains momentum, opportunity for yards after the catch. This is this is processing. This is understanding. Like, all right, like I have a, a primary read that's open right now. I need to get him the ball quickly. And so we we just we just throw this thing right. I'm gonna have pressure on my lap. It's not worth wasting time and setting my back foot down and trying to drive this thing with velocity. I'm just gonna loft the lollipop up there accurately away from coverage, giving the receiver space to make even more yards after the catch. It is processing. It is understanding of the game that creates these throwing windows. Now, when you're the spectacular Spider-Man and you can do things that other human beings can't do, sometimes you fancy yourself immortal, okay? And you, and you kind of just push your limits and you you, you foster perilous amounts of, uh, of self-confidence, which we have in Caleb sometimes. We're gonna go play action fake, they're gonna pull a guard, play action fake right here. This is meant to look like a bubble with a little block, and then all of a sudden that block bre breaks, it becomes a slant. That's what Caleb wants to throw. Backside, this motion man just goes on a wheel, and then we have a dig backside. But this is the concept we wanna be reading out. 
Snap the football, play action fake, Caleb looks to it. There's a zone defender right here in that slant window, right? He's sitting right in it, so you can't throw this. And the temptation is gonna be to sit on your back foot and just wait, wait for this slant to clear this guy and break into space. But Caleb, smartly, he understands he's got pressure coming down the pipe and, and they don't have anybody to pick it up. So Caleb sits on it and then breaks that pressure. He's so good against unblocked pressure. Now, what was true then is true now, right? You you go and you break this pressure, you're, you're working out of your right. You should know that this slant is gonna clear that zone defender work into a lot of space, man. Like you you just confirmed because you you know where that guy is, you know where this guy is, that there's nobody in the middle of the field, right? So you should know that window is there. Even if you don't get your eyes all the way back to him, here's that dig breaking, it's gonna come right back to you. 15 is gonna work right back to Caleb with about as much room as you can ask for on the football field. And Caleb doesn't throw this, right? Because Caleb sees, you can just see his helmet here at the bottom. Caleb sees the wheel throwing the hand up and Caleb goes, ooh, watch this. <laughs> Go shit, all right? This is a very, very silly thing to attempt when you had such, such easy throws here to the middle of the field. But he attempts it and he shorts it by like six yards and he gets picked off. That right there is just silly. It just don't do that. And in the, the coaching point is literally as simple as that. It's, hey, like, you know that's wrong, right? Yep, okay, don't do it and moving on. Honestly, plays like the Colorado one where it's like very clearly just like, don't do that. Like you got way too big for your boots. Those worry me less than plays like these, which Caleb like gets away with more often, but is it's still, it's not perfect process. We're gonna go play action fake here, back coming across, tight end's gonna be to the flat, and then we have an inbreaker right here. And then there's also this, the, this end cut behind that as well. But th this inbreaker from the slot is the important one because it's gonna have good leverage. Right? You got two way go on this off corner. The players to worry about are these players, right? Because they're gonna be filling in that window if you wanna throw this. That's what the play action fake is for. And Caleb's looking at this, all right? We're gonna go, we, we go play action fake, pull that, tight end moves out to the flat. And then we had blitzers come down. And this player right here, who's that first guy in that window, is running with the tight end. And so Caleb is looking the whole way at this inbreaker, not connect, the back is, the defensive back is not connected to this. And there is no sinker that's taking away this window. This is the primary read and it is opening up into space. Hit this guy in stride, let him turn up field, break a tackle on the deep safety. We got a stew going, right? This is a touchdown. And Caleb just says no, because he wants to throw this vertical route. And he throws a great back shoulder ball, it's an offensive pass interference, so it gets called back. And 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 look, okay, again, crazy throwing platform. Look at this, look at how the bend never comes out of his knees, right? I'm, I'm making a bad Caleb play into a good Caleb play, because he's amazing. Look at how he just, just keeps the bend in his knees the whole time, just shifts the hips forward, so we can uncork this thing. Beautiful throw, great. Like it, he gets away with it, right? Cause you, cause you can, oh, pressure in my lap. I'm just picking this one-on-one. -on -one. Don't worry, I'll throw him open. And he does, but you should be throwing this. You, this is structure. We you, we shouldn't, we cannot, it's one thing to say no to like, oh, they're telling me to throw a two yard curl route in third and seven. We can't be saying no to this. Route past the sticks with velocity over the middle of the field with momentum, like in space. Ah, that's the sort of, of, of risk prone decision. That worries me a little bit. So we have in Caleb, uh, a player who achieves throws, right? Who creates opportunities that other dudes don't. Like, like the world has more colors for Caleb Williams, right? They, 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 there's just more possibilities. There's the, 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 the Newtonian laws don't apply to the guy in the football field, right? The, the creation is crazy. And so the, the good so dramatically outweighs the bad. Like you take some of the, the risk taking stuff and, and you take it so cheerfully because what he's going to be able to give you in terms of second reaction throws and scramble drill throws and even the instructor throws where he's finding weird throwing platforms like all of that is just maestro level stuff and, and, and it's rare. It doesn't come out every single draft. And that's the other thing about Caleb. When you watch him, all right, you, you can feel, you can experience that this is not a typical dude. This is not the sort of guy who comes out every single year. And, and, and accordingly, he starts to generate some vibes to some other players, namely one particular quarterback who you're not supposed to compare people to. This right here, third and goal, fourth quarter, enemy territory, down by multiple scores, right? We need every single play here. Caleb in the pocket, nothing's open in structure. I gotta find some space, touchdown. All right, end zone view is nice. Okay, snap the football. And really like, the pocket initially actually like, is clean, and uh, but he goes through all of his reads and, and nobody is 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 that easily open, right? It's not like he's, he's turning down an obvious touchdown, but all right, time to bend the gravity of the field, create some space, and then he finds it, right? And, and, and it's the way that he is he's moving forward and then all of a sudden he starts moving laterally and he, he opens that, 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 that right side to find this throw moving against his momentum. Very cool. Now, here is a 2018 touchdown from a quarterback who shall remain nameless because we don't compare players to him. 
And here we are going to drop back and then, oh, well, nice, nice uh, four man rush, pockets initially clean. We don't like any of the looks. Let's scramble, create some space to our left and then all of a sudden open that right side and find a throw. Now this one, a little bit of yards after the catch, but end zone view, I just want you to watch the throwing motion, right? Just watch the way, okay, as we're moving to our left, we see a player who, who's, uh, like the, it, it, with the Chiefs here, it's with your momentum, but it's still to the right side, it's still to the wrong side. With Caleb, the player was coming opposite his momentum. So now you gotta be able to get your, your hips around and then throw this thing with, with arm kind of behind your momentum. It is a challenging throw, especially when it's between defenders like that, all right? Just to just, it, there's a, there, it, it just looks very similar, okay? I, do, I have no other comment besides it looks very similar. You remember this little ditty from Patrick? All right, this was 2022. He's moving to his right. Jared McKinnon goes, leaks, and finds some space. Mahomes just kind of like underhand tosses it over his head, and then all of a sudden it's a 50 yard touchdown. End zone view. Oh, I drop him back. Oh, space out to my right. Maybe I'll tuck this ball and run. Let me stiff arm the Steve with the tackle. And then whoop, you just kind of just, just, just a little hacky sack toss over the top. It's a very fun play. It's a very Patrick play. And here's a play that's very Caleb. All right, we are going to snap the football, a little play action fake. They're trying to, right, they're trying to land on, on the half roll here. And then this is going to lean to the corner. And then all of a sudden, it's going to break back because Caleb is able to make this throw, which is stupid and annoying. But he is. So that's, what they, that's what they want. Caleb doesn't like the look, right? Because that, that safety is nice on top of it. And you got pressure coming down, dead down the pipe. And so Caleb says no, goes and scrambles. And then as he's scrambling, discovers that little throw right there, end zone view. All right, send our man in motion, snap the football, play action fake, there's our roll, throw that post, ah, there's pressure, now it's time to make something up, I'm scrambling, I'm getting tackled, oh, look at this, <laughs> and then just over the head, and it's a completion. I would never personally compare anybody to Patrick Mahomes because that would create unrealistic expectations and it's unfair and he's the GOAT quarterback of all time and I'm not doing that and don't put it in the title that I'm doing it or in the description or in the comments, I'm not comparing Caleb Williams to Patrick Mahomes, write that down. With that said, it is impossible to watch Caleb play and not feel the similarities because it, it, it is visceral. It is in the way that they move. It is in the way that they think. It is, it is the arm angles they achieve and the throwing platforms they achieve, just the looseness of the body and, and the weird quickness whenever they randomly need to access it and the, and the accuracy 55 yards down the field. Like it is just stylistically vibe. You can tell that Caleb just watches Mahomes and just wants to be him. You can see it in the way that they move. And there's been other quarterbacks who have tried to do that, right? I remember when Zach Wilson came out in 2021 and they told us, oh, he's a a blend of Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes and you watch him you're like no like this, this this guy doesn't have it he doesn't have that just that that spirit he doesn't have that freedom he doesn't have that mobility that athleticism that that grace that presence Caleb's got it and so it's not one-to-one -one, right because Mahomes now is like a you know, check down guy and take what the defense gives you and he's evolved so much but I have not experienced a quarterback that I would call Mahomesian, that I would say is like Mahomes that 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 evokes a similar reaction to watching the game as Mahomes does. I had, I had not seen one come out in the draft until this year when you watch Caleb. And it is inarguable. It is inescapable. You can't say you don't feel it when he makes these plays that he does because it is so clearly inspired by and reminiscent of Patrick Mahomes. But I'm not copying him to Mahomes because it's not fair, okay? It's just, he feels like maybe he might be him. But I'm not, I'm not copying him to him. So there's lofty expectations for Caleb, right? He's going into Chicago, who's the best quarterback in their history is like Jay Cutler. They've never had a 4,000 yard passer in a single season. They never had a 30 passing touchdown guy in a single season. And Caleb has the potential to be like both of that in year one. Caleb has the potential to be a perennial all pro. Caleb has the potential to be a multiple Super Bowl champion winning quarterback. He is that level of talent at the position. That's why he's going first overall over the exciting but late breakout Jaden Daniels. First overall over the young and exciting but inexperienced unproven JJ McCarthy. First overall over the flashy but inconsistent Drake May. Like Caleb is it. Man, he's the thing. Uh, uh, Lisan al Gaib, man. This is what we've been waiting for. And that'll do it for us here on the play sheet. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you watched all of our quarterback episodes. You can find those on the Bring NFL channel. You can find full podcast episodes. We're doing a live mock draft. There's so much stuff. So you gotta subscribe and you gotta like it and you gotta comment on it. And don't be mean in the comments. My mom reads all of them. Thank you, Corey.